Hey guys, it's Liv here, bringing you guys a special kind of video. Today we're going to be discussing the Ubers tier, and I'm going to be going over my personal viability rankings, and what I think is and isn't viable in the tier. Now, the way I decided on the Pokemon for this tier is because you may be looking at this and wondering why some of these Pokemon are here. Uh, so basically what I did is anything that is tiered as an Uber automatically made the list, regardless of usage. And then for the rest of the Pokemon, because there are obviously a lot of Pokemon, for example, Ferrothorn, that are pretty viable in the tier. Uh, for anything that was not an Uber tier Pokemon, uh, what we did was we picked the overall top 50 most used Pokemon as of the last tier update for the uh, for the general Ubers tiering. So what I mean by that is anything, uh, it's the 0 to 1500 rankings, because that, when averaging tier stats, has the most weighted average. And when picking the top 50, the top 50 there had the highest percentage of usage. So obviously, uh, this list may very well be different from what is being used at top ladder. However, I did still feel like this was at least a not bad list to pull from. Because, as I said, it was just the highest usability of Pokemon. And it's also weighted the highest when calculating tier averages as a whole. And I didn't feel like doing the math to actually break down a weighted tier average. Because I don't even know how Smogon actually calculates it. I just know that this is the portion that is weighted the highest. So I figured, therefore, I would go off of just this because I couldn't find a full already calculated 50, uh, top 50 for Ubers. Um, if you guys do enjoy this, of course, leave a like down below and let me know your thoughts. Um, I'm going to link the tier list itself down below so you guys can make your own and you can at me on Twitter with your tier lists. Uh, I don't think YouTube will be nice with links. However, I will still check through any sort of uh, removed comments just to make sure that I'm not missing anyone who does link down below in case if anyone does link their completed list down below. Uh, regardless though, I would love to see your guys' in any way, shape, or form. And with that being said, uh, let's get right into it. So, how I'm going to do this video is I'm going to start off with the Pokemon that I think are nearly mandatory. Because, and then I'll go, like, in order from the rest. Because I do think that that sets apart the rest of the list. Going over the nearly mandatory Pokemon will basically help us define what could be below and where it can be. So, I think that's the important place to start from. After that, we can go out of order. But I do think that is the place that we need to start. So... Uh, basically, the way I broke this down is nearly mandatory. These are Pokemon that I would argue should be on almost every team of yours. Uh, there are a few Pokemon, I think, that really define this tier list. And I think that that very well means that they should have their own tier. Uh, very good Pokemon. These are Pokemon that I would say probably, realistically, you're probably going to run these on at least like half your builds. At least half your personal builds. Or at the very least, you're going to probably see them a couple times in every time you ladder. Uh, usable Pokemon. These are Pokemon that can like definitely come but i wouldn't necessarily say that they're like anything too defining in the format niche these are pokemon that like you could build a team around and you could probably get some wins with it i wouldn't necessarily uh i wouldn't necessarily suggest it though and then don't use these are pokemon you should just flat out not use so i'll start with the nearly mandatory shadow calyrex um i'll start off by saying if you're not using shadow calyrex you might actually be brain dead um because of the fact that there's literally zero drawback to using Shadow Calyrex. It is by far the most broken Pokemon on the tier, I would argue. Um, another Pokemon that I would say is nearly mandatory, because of it, Eveltal. Again, because of Shadow Calyrex, this Pokemon is nearly mandatory. Now, I would still say, even without Shadow Calyrex in the tier, Eveltal at worst would be a very good Pokemon. However, I do still think there's a ton of this format that uh, Eveltal definitely checks significantly well. For example, stuff like Mewtwo, Lunala, Dawnwings, Duskmane... I uh, can obviously check, oh, and that, that's just a Pokemon that it pretty much, like, almost invalidates, I would argue. And Eveltal still could check a lot of other Pokemon in this format. It's not just limited to those few Pokemon. Uh, it's obviously good at checking, at least, if you're faster, depending on, like, if Trick Room's up or not. You could definitely do a lot of damage to stuff like Shadow Cal I Ice Rider Calyrex, for example. Uh, you could still chew hits from stuff like Genesect, even though no one runs Genesect. Uh, Sucker Punch is great. This is a phenomenal Marshadow check, etc., etc. I can go on and on. Um, but in general, I think Veltal speaks for itself. Another Pokemon I would argue is nearly mandatory would be Zacian Crown. This is another Pokemon I would say that while less so than a Veltal and Shadow Calyrex is still a pretty meta-defining Pokemon, I would argue. Um, this Pokemon definitely requires a very specific set of checks. And because of that, I think that it pretty much just finds a spot at the top of the list. There are two other Pokemon I think that really, really fit this role. One being Duskmane, and I think that's, again, similar to how a Veltal is there for Shadow Calyrex, I think a Duskmane is there for, uh, D for Zacian Crown. Um, obviously, you could put, like, Quagsire in here, however, no one's really using Quagsire right now. Um, which, I'll be honest, I am a bit shocked about. 
when I saw that sh that Quagsire didn't make the top 50, it actually really surprised me. However, I do think that Quagsire will definitely make a resurgence as the meta evolves, but it, it was definitely surprising to say the least to not see it because I know that Quagsire was such a like a pretty near mandatory check to Zacian Ground if you weren't running Dusk Main. Um, and, and Quagsire would not have made this tiering. They would have probably been underusable, but it was good enough to really define a spot purely because of one Pokemon. Um, regardless, though, Dustman is basically filling the Quagsire role at the current moment, so I do think that that definitely earns spot in the list. And the final Pokemon I think it really earns spot here is none other than Kyogre. Um, and I think that Kyogre really earns a spot here because while I don't think it's as impactful as Crown or Calyrex, or even a Veltal, I do think that it is at least as dominant as Duskmane, and the fact that the Kyogre has such few switches just because of its stab, and also the fact that it runs Specs or Scarf and really destroy teams, I think this Pokemon is definitely one to be really, like, not slept on, in my opinion. Uh, Kyogre is a pretty dominant Pokemon, it always will be. Even in metas where Primal Groudon was around, regular Kyogre was still at least, like, usable enough Pokemon to where it was at least a niche pick. Um, actually, I, I don't know why I said the word usable, because that's probably confusing with usable tier. It was definitely a niche pick, at least, even in Primal Groudon meta, which should speak volumes, because Primal Groudon basically invalidated Kyogre. And without that Pokemon around, Kyogre is free to roam just however it feels like in the tier. Um, so with that said, we've defined our nearly mandatory picks, and let's just go through the rest. So first up is Chansey. Um, I'm going to put Chansey in the usable tier. Chansey is a really good spec stat, however, Chansey is definitely pretty passive, and... While it is definitely more spadef because of its item than Blissey, I think the passive recovery is also really good for Blissey here. I don't think that either is really better or worse than the other. I do think though that with the top, with two of the top mods being pretty physical Pokemon, being Duskmane and also Zacian Crown, on top of a Veltal also being able to run physical variants, and especially going for knockoff on two of those Pokemon, uh, Zacian Crown sadly cannot, however the other two can. I do think that definitely puts Bliss, uh, Chansey at a slight disadvantage because without a Violet, it literally is just the worst Blissey. And at least Blissey without Leftovers isn't going to take hits worse than Chansey would. Um, so I do think that I'm going to put Chansey in the usable tier. It is still a very good Pokemon. I still definitely would recommend Chansey. It's still very not bad. Uh, Ditto. Ditto's in the very good tier. Um, Ditto has a couple of reasons in the very good tier. First elephant in the room is Zacian Crown, being able to come in on a plus one Zacian Crown, then gain an attack boost over it while also having a scarf. Pokemon is very, very good. There is no reason to really not... Well, I would say there is definitely reason to not run Ditto. However, Ditto is still a very good Pokemon if played right, and can honestly pick off a ton of different offensive variants, and even just outlast certain other fat teams. However, I do think it's especially good against offense. Uh, a well-played Ditto could honestly destroy any sort of offense team, and I feel pretty confident in that. Besides, of course, like any sort of sub-offense, like a sub geo Xerneas, would be like the only exception I can think of. However, I don't know a lot of sub-Pokemon besides like maybe sub-plot Calyrex. However, I haven't really seen a lot of non-choice or life orb variants. But I do think Ditto is still regardless very good because of that, obviously. Now going into the next Pokemon, this is one that I actually was really surprised to see in the tier, and that's going to be Zapdos Galar. Now, I'll be honest, I can't really think of many reasons to really be running Zapdos Galar. I think it's truly just in here for new Mon Hype. Uh, it's really good for Ferrothorn and Titar, I guess, so it could actually have some use as a potential partner for Shadow Calyrex. Um, looking at the tier, this doesn't really do a ton to a lot of the really viable Pokemon. However, looking at some other stuff that was used, uh, Land of T had some low usage, so I guess Intimidate could be good for that. Uh, as I mentioned at least with uh, Titar and Ferrothorn, those are two really good Shadow Calyrex checks, and Galar Zapdos would absolutely decimate both of them. Uh, it's also not bad for stuff like Drill for, I guess, non-Scarf Darmanitan. Um, the Thunderous Kick is also not bad for Duskmane. So I think with Thunderous Kick in mind, I'm going to put this thing in niche. I don't think it's a great Pokemon, and I think this realistically I may bump down to don't use, depending on how the rest of the list shapes up. Though I do definitely think this at least has some niche in the format. I can at least see why people would use it. I wouldn't necessarily use it myself, but I can definitely get where people would be coming from. I do think that maybe this Pokemon could have been a really good Dynamax Pokemon if Dynamax was live in the same closet it was before, because Defiant would have been really cool against other Dynamax users if it tried to harden or just max on a potential uh, overprediction or something. In general, though, I don't think this is a great Pokemon, as this may very well bump down. Uh, next up is Mewtwo. Now, I'm going to put Mewtwo in the usable tier. Uh, big reason being is there's a lot better Psychic types in the format right now. I do think that Mewtwo is still a very good Pokemon. Uh, obviously, while Lele didn't make the list, I do think that Lele is a good partner with this, because obviously Psy Spam is still really good, and the fact that the really only good viable Darks are Veltal, and then the next best ones are like 
Urshifu and Grimmsnarl off of this list. There's not really any others that I can really suggest. Uh, actually, Titar. Titar's a big one, to be fair. Um, but Mewtwo, of course, has really good coverage for those. On top of also having a nerve to get past berries, this Pokemon is definitely a good Pokemon. However, I don't think it's any sort of like really strong meta pick by any means. Uh, next up is Mew. I'll be honest, I don't know why people are using Mew. It's scuffed Mewtwo. Obviously, this thing does get really good hazard compression, but again, everything that Mew can do in this tier, I think is pretty out. It's pretty outclassed by in a significant way by literally every other psychic type, let alone every other just Pokemon in the tier. I don't know why people are using Mew. Um, it should just not be used in my opinion. Next up, Shuckle. So again, similar to Mew, I, not similar to Mew. Um, similar to Mew, this thing can be obviously a pretty nice hazard setter. Um, I'm gonna put Shuckle in the usable tier. Webs are really, really good. This just outclasses Shuckle, uh, Mew in every way as a lead. Uh, Shuckle also being able to get webs and rocks is really nice compression because compared to something like a Slurpuff, let's say, or even like a Galvantula, this is a web setter that can obviously take advantage of just being able to go for just hazard stacking which is really cool for it. Uh, Mental Herb Shuckle is really free because you can at least guarantee one hazard up because it is bulky enough to take a hit from any sort of taunt users, which is obviously really cool for it. Uh, its speed is piss poor and uh, that's kind of bad, but Final Gambit also at, against especially taunt users that might try and taunt you after you go for a hazard, then you can Final Gambit them as they try and predict that you're not gonna, uh, that you are gonna go for a hazard. Um, so you can get around taunt that way and at least not be dead momentum or let any sort of free setup users in, which is pretty cool. Uh, Shuckle's still a really not bad pick. I don't think Shuckle will ever be truly unviable in Ubers just because of stuff like Shadow Cali, for example, Zossie and Crown. Those two basically give Shuckle all the merit you need to use it, in my opinion. Uh, next up is Blissey. Blissey, I'd say, is very good. If you look at most of the mods on this format, a lot of these are very good, especially offensive Pokemon. Stuff like Kyogre, Shadow Calyrex. Those two alone would justify Blissey, but then you look at stuff like Xerneas, for example, is a monster especially. Uh, Palkia, I guess, also is, but Palkia is not the most viable pick. Uh, Lugia, but again, Lugia isn't going to really break anything anyway. Uh, Reshiram, Lunala, Dawnwings, uh, we could, actually, there's not a lot, but like Regieleki as well, Eternatus. Um, there's a decent amount of Pokemon that I think really justify Blissey, as well as like Kirim White and Lando, I and Naga. So, as I said, I, going on, I'm sure I'll remember stuff as I go through and really, like, sift through stuff, but, but Blissey's presence in Ubers is always a really valuable one, in my opinion, just because of its monstrous spinef and HP, and the fact that, of course, could wish past the stuff like Giratina, for example, is a great partner with it, I could wish past the stuff like Groudon, for example, another great partner with it, Ferrothorn, etc. So, I think Blissey is a very good Pokemon in this tier. It's pretty undeniable. This Pokemon is just dominant, in my opinion, as a really good special wall. Uh, speaking of special walls, Titar, another very good pick. Uh, as long as Shadow Calyrex is in the format, Titar will be viable. And even then, when Shadow Calyrex is gone, Lunala is just going to take the place, and Titar will still be a very good Pokemon. There's really not any reason to not run Titar as your Dark if you're not going in Veltal. It should always be one of those two, in my opinion. There's no other viable Darks that even compare to those two. So, Titar is really good in that regard. Sand especially, giving up the really nice spin F boost, helps it take on a lot of specially offensive psychic types even more, which there are a lot on this list. Stuff like Calyrex, Mewtwo, as we'll go through the list, we get stuff like Lunala and Dawnwing. So, there are a decent amount of Pokemon that does check really well. So, yeah, Titar, very good Pokemon. Next up is Lugia. Uh, Lugia I would also put in usable. This is a really good Pokemon in stalls. However, I haven't really seen a lot of Lugia just because of stuff like, obviously, Calyrex and Aveltal being two of the best Pokemon. Kind of makes Lugia's job a bit worse. However, I will say that Lugia is still definitely not a bad pick by any means. I think it's still obnoxiously fat enough to where some teams will definitely struggle breaking it. But I cannot justify putting this thing any higher than usable. Uh, ho oh That good pick. Boots make this thing so dumb. On top of also regen, of course. Defog. Phenomenal defogger. This is a pretty nice soft check to Shadow Cat. I uh, to, uh, to Zossian Crown. However, Wild Charge obviously does a lot. You can still definitely pivot around it to get around Zossian Crown if you want because it has, of course, no recovery and it can't even pass it recover with like a leftovers or something. So, Ho is still a very good pick in that regard. I think it's definitely a really strong Pokemon in the format. There's not a ton that really breaks it well. And I think that the only thing stopping it from being one of these top five is just the fact that, unlike these top five, uh, Cra Zamazenta, I know Zamazenta, uh, Veltal and uh, Duskmane are phenomenal checks to two Pokemon in this tier and also still cover their own niche. Uh, Ho-Oh doesn't really carve out its own niche in the format, so unlike those two Pokemon that do defensively check two of the top threats so well, uh, Ho-Oh just isn't that, in my opinion. Still a very good Pokemon, and I think it's probably going to end up being the best Pokemon in the very good tier. However, I don't think that it's necessarily going to have to be nearly mandatory. 
I don't look at a team and I think Ho-Oh needs to be on this team. I think that it could be on a lot of teams and it will be on a lot of builds. I don't think it's going to be as mandatory as any of these five though. Uh, next up is Blaziken. Blaziken I'm going to also put in the usable tier. Um, definitely not a bad Pokemon. I think its stabs are a lot more usable in this format than let's say in OU. However, I do think there's certain Pokemon that basically invalidate Blaziken as we'll get through the list. Stuff like Giratina, for example, Zyger Complete. Actually, I'm going to put Blaziken in niche. Uh, Zyger Complete and, Blaz and Giratina basically invalidate this Pokemon. However, I think it is better than Zapdos. So I'm going to actually also bump down Zapdos to, uh, to don't use because it's literally just more viable than Zapdos in every way, in my opinion, because it can also get past stuff like the Dusk Main, for example, because of the fact that it can obviously just Flare Blitz it. And the Fire Crown obviously does have certain matchups it will benefit a ton from. For example, uh, you can obviously use the Fire Stab against stuff like... Um... Actually, is there really anything? Like, there's nothing really that viable. So I guess uh, I'll put Zapdos back in the niche tier. Because um, Thunder's Kick is still definitely very good against a lot of these Pokemon. Um, at the very least, though, Blaziken with its own speed boost is still really cool. Um, really, the only pair that I would really say that I would really use this on a team with is, like, uh, Groudon team. Which I'll get to Groudon in a bit. Um, I do think, though, this is definitely not a bad Pokemon. I just wouldn't really build a team around it. Uh, Groudon next. I would put Groudon in the usable tier. Uh, Groudon would honestly be very good right now if it wasn't for the fact that there is definitely a much more notable Groudon type in the format that I will get into in a bit as we go down the list. Uh, but Groudon definitely is a still really good Pokemon. Great check to stuff like Regieleki, which honestly without Groudon and the other ground type that I would mention. Well, actually, a couple ground types that I think personally are class ground in this format. Uh, but Groudon is still definitely a very good Pokemon. Nothing to be slept on. Uh, it's Honestly, its edge weight coverage alone is able to really tear through a lot of builds at the moment. And I do think it's still definitely a very good Pokemon in the usable tier. However, I do think that, Girit I, that Groudon still definitely hurts a lot from just any meta where Kyogre is allowed, basically makes Groudon that much worse. Though it is still definitely a Pokemon that I think can definitely be used in a lot of teams and definitely patch a lot of holes in this format. Next up is Ray. I'm going to put Ray in the very good tier. Uh, biggest reasons for Ray is one, it's probably, in my opinion, the best Dragon Dance user in the tier at the moment, besides like, Duskbane. Uh, Ray also with Dragon Ascent plus Dragon Coverage is just in general, well, Dragon Stab, I should say, it's just in general really, really hard hitting against pretty much everything in the format. And on top of that, stuff like Duskman can't even switch in as a flying resist because of stuff like V-Create that the spawn gets. So in general, Ray is definitely a really dominant Pokemon in my opinion. Uh, probably one of the best Dragon types in the tier if I had to pick. Uh, just my personal thoughts, I do think that Ray is obviously a really free Pokemon to build around as well. Uh, boots are cool, however, Band and Scarf are probably like the best items by far. Maybe like a Lumberry if you're going with Outrage, though I'd probably just go Dragon Claw because Xerneas and Zacian Crown exist. So yeah, uh, I do think that Ray is a very good Pokemon. Um, I personally really enjoy using Ray in the little bit that I have. I haven't gotten a ton of chances to use it, though I do think it's definitely a Pokemon to be uh, to be threatened with. Also, just because of how hard Ray hits anyway, a Scale Shot set could definitely clean up late game, especially if you're doing like a Bandit Rayquaza, because you can obviously Scale Shot get the boost against a lot of teams if you kill the Fairy type. And then not only are you boosting speed, but you're hitting off of a Bandit hit, it's got a multi-hit as well. Uh, so I think that Ray definitely does have some merit. I don't think Scale Shot is the best set personally, but I think that like an SD or a Dragon Dance variant can honestly rip through a lot of teams. So Ray is definitely going to, in my opinion, be in the very good tier, especially looking at a lot of the other top Pokemon. I think that Ray can definitely get past a lot of them. Even stuff like Ground, for example, you could obviously just run Waterfall for it with Airlock. You're going to automatically destroy that. Uh, next up is Garchomp. Uh, Garchomp, I can definitely get why people would use it. However, I'm going to put Garchomp in the... I'm actually going to put Garchomp in Don't Use. There's already better mods that are not only four times Ice Week, but also just Dragon Crown in general. I don't think there's any reason to use Garchomp unless you really want it for, like, rocks. I don't know. There's a lot of dragons in the tier. There's two really strong fairies in the tier that pretty much invalidate most dragons, at least. Or, at the very least, pressure most dragons a lot. I don't think that Garchomp offers anything besides, I guess, its speed and also the fact that it has rocks over any of them. I don't think there's really a reason to use Garchomp. Maybe I'm wrong. I just don't think there is. Uh, Dialga. I'm going to put Dialga in the usable tier. Uh, steel type is cool because it at least makes fairy neutral against it. Also, just in general, Dialga is a really fast Pokemon. That, well, actually, base 90 isn't really that fast. I was thinking Palkia is base 100. Um, actually, I'm going to pump Dialga down. Uh, looking at a lot of the other Pokemon I have listed and others I plan to put up there, I can't really think of much reason to use Dialga. However, its typing is still really cool. It Getting hazards is really cool. It's one of the faster rock setters in the tier, at least. That is at least a native Uber. Um, it has really cool coverage and it's definitely fat enough to where you could like run a berry and maybe pick off stuff. I don't think this is a great Pokemon by any means, but it definitely does have some niche. 
Uh, Palkia, I'm going to also put his niche. Uh, I do like him running this thing on webs personally, especially with Kyogre. I think Mixed Palkia especially is a really threatening Pokemon with stuff like Focus Punch, Sub, and then Stabs. I think is really threatening. You can also obviously drop uh, Sub for Thunder and just hit Kyogre better. I do think this is a Pokemon that can definitely tear through a lot of builds. I personally enjoyed using it on my webs team. I don't think that this is a Pokemon that will pop off a lot of games. Even when I tried sweeping with it in that one live, I do think that it was really hard to bring it in. Though, there is definitely a place for it in my opinion in Ubers, it's just not a common one. Uh, Giratina Origin. I'm going to put Giratina Origin in niche, but I'm going to put Giratina Regular and Usable. I'm going to go over these together. Uh, basically, the way I see it, Giratina Origin doesn't have a lot of reason to be used. I guess there's certain builds that you could maybe use it on. Can't think of many, but maybe like a balance, I guess. Giratina Regular, though, is basically just the better version of it, and I do think it is really fat. Really great partner with Blissey, in my opinion, though I don't think that Stall is the best right now by any means, so it's going to get usable, because at least Blissey can be fat enough to justify on non-hard Stall builds, just because of how well it just defensively takes certain hits from special threats. So, Giratina doesn't necessarily have that luxury, it's pretty much only usable on Stall, though it is a very, very potent Stall threat, to say the least. Uh, we have Drill next. Jill being a really good spinner in the tier is probably the premier spinner in the tier by far. If you're running non-defog, this is the Pokemon you're running. I'm going to put it in very good. It's also really good check to stuff like Regieleki, of course, or just any Electro type in general, which I guess there really aren't a lot of. Uh, in general, this is a definitely threatening Pokemon. Be able to also, after a rapid spin, make sure that stuff like Xerneas can't come in. Or even just if you're running Jolly Drill, uh, most Xerneas are running Modest, so you're going to outpace most of them anyway. Uh, this Pokemon is definitely really nice. I... Definitely think that this is a Pokemon that is really free on a lot of builds as well. So yeah, uh, a very good tier. Uh, G Darm, I'm gonna put this in niche. While I do think that G Darm is really good coverage and obviously it's a really good momentum Pokemon, I can't really see a lot of builds I would run this Pokemon on. However, it does hit hard enough to really justify breaking through certain threats. So it's at least not a don't use Pokemon. Galvantula, don't use. Why? I couldn't tell you why this is being used. It has to be for like compound eyes. Uh, Thunder Wave, I guess, on top of also having webs. Just don't use it. Please don't use it. I beg you, don't use it. Ferrothorn, very good. As I mentioned, there's some non Ubers that really define Ubers still, and I think a Ferrothorn is one of them. Uh, of the non Ubers, this is probably, in my opinion, the best one used besides Ditto. Uh, very important being able to have access to dual hazards and spikes and self rocks makes this very good. On top of also being one of the few really good Xerneas checks in the format. Not only can it also check Xerneas, but it can check Kyogre as well, very, very well. So I do think this Pokemon has a ton of merit, personally, in Ubers. Iron Bob is also really cool against checking certain Pokemon, that, though there's not a lot of physical hits this really wants to take. Because a lot of physical Pokemon do get coverage for this, stuff like Groudon obviously gets Fire Punch, uh, stuff like Zacian Ground gets Close Combat, Ho-Oh obviously has Sacred Fire. Really, the only one that I can think of is Eveltal, but even then, Eveltal could always just run, like, knock off on a special set and then just go for Heat Wave and kill it. So... This thing in general is really mostly useful for its special walling, which it can do very well to be fair. So it's definitely a very good Pokemon. Uh, next up is Reshiram. I'm going to also put Reshiram in niche. It's basically Palkia, but I would argue this doesn't have a weather it's usable on. It's just the fact that it, it's a dragon that can hit steals very well. But like, it's still not great. Uh, Zekrom, I'm going to put this thing in usable. I do think a DD Zekrom is really cool. Uh, honestly, just the fact that it can DD on a mod with Electric and Dragon is really cool. I think it's obviously really nice to just outpace, especially on any sort of web variant team. Um, definitely a cool Pokemon. I can definitely get why I haven't seen a lot of it, though I think it definitely does have a lot of merit. In my opinion, just looking at other Pokemon on this list. There are certain Pokemon that definitely like hard stop it, stuff like Groudon, for example. And then also another ground type we'll get into later, basically hard stop it. Though I do definitely think this does have a lot of use on this list personally. Uh, Lando T, niche. This is pretty much like the definition of a niche ground type in this format. Uh, Intimidate's cool for stuff like Zekrom, I guess, and stuff like Zacian Crown, I guess. But like, I can't think of any matchups that Lando T really offers a lot to. Well, Lando I, don't use it. It's bad. There are so many better special threats. The only reason you would use this Pokemon as a special ground type, but like, why? Just why would you use it? I cannot name a team I've used it on. At least Land of T offers something to a build. But no, I literally doesn't. Next up is Kieran White. Uh, just a better Rush Ram in the tier, in my opinion, especially with the fact that this has a better speed than Rush Ram. Rush Ram having base 90, this having 95. Also, just having the ice typing is really cool for certain other grounds. So, it's just a better Rush Ram. Kieran Black. I think Karen Black is also usable. I would put this on par with Zekrom, purely because at the very least, Zekrom has Stab on Bolt Strike, or on a Fusion Bolt, which is really cool for it. 
Also, Zekrom having just Bolt Strike as well over Fusion Bolt is really cool because it at least hit harder than Bolt Strike and the Fusion Bolt does. Uh, so I think it's at least on par with Zekrom. Also, Zekrom doesn't have to worry about boots as much because obviously, uh, well, to be fair, Gear and Black does still just run Life Orb a lot of the time, but at the very least, it does take more from Hazards, which is definitely a detriment. It's pretty much just like a different but similar Zekrom in my opinion. I think it just depends on the build, but they're both definitely not bad Pokemon. Genesect, niche. This would be don't use except for Kyogre's back at the top. So this at least has niche and rain, I guess. It's still not great. It's probably one of the worst Pokemon in this tier. Charizard, don't use. Dynamax got banned. Enough said. Xerneas, very good. If you've ever played Xerneas, you'll know why it's here. The only reason it is not in the nearly mandatory tier is because Zacian Crown, Duskmane, Enough said. Also, the fact that uh, as a special mod in general, Kyogre and Shadow Calyx are both just a lot more potent when they first come in. Xerneas doesn't need the setup turn. However, it is still definitely a very brain dead Pokemon to use. Next up is that ground type I mentioned, uh, Zyger Complete. Zyger Complete, very, very good Pokemon. Uh, in my opinion, this is probably the best ground type in the format, at least as a whole. Of the non ubers obviously, it's Drill. But as a whole, Zyga Complete is definitely the best ground type. Able to be a really good physical check to a lot of Pokemon. Uh, especially versus non-player off Zacian Crowns. This thing can actually check it really, really well. Especially once you get into crown form, this thing is a menace. Uh, it can check through pretty much any physical threat that is not Zacian Crown, as long as Zacian Crown doesn't have player off. The only other exception is like Gene Arm. But obviously if Gene Arm picks wrong, it's kind of fucked. So yeah, I do think this is a really good Pokemon. Uh... Next up is Zygarde Regular, because this did just recently get banned, so we do have to tier regular as well. This is don't use. Why would you use it? Literally, there's Zygarde Complete right here. The only reason you use this is to get into Complete Form, but you never use this just as Zygarde 50%. You never do, so why? Uh, next up is Pex. Pex is going to go in the usable tier. Uh, if this was the last format, I would definitely put Pex in very good. However, I do think it is very hard to bring any sort of really fat teams right now. So because of that, I think that unlike something like a Blissey that, again, is just a really good special sponge, Pex is just sort of there. And even against special water types, for example, stuff like Kyogre. Kyogre has Thunder for it, obviously. So this isn't even like the best Kyogre check. That's obviously Ferrothorn. So this is still a very usable Pokemon. And especially on any sort of fat team, I guess, if you can make it work, this would definitely be up there. Next up is Solgaleo. Don't use Solgaleo. It's literally just worse Duskmane. Don't use it. It doesn't get rocks. Doesn't have as good coverage. Doesn't have as good setup. Don't use it. Um, we're going to get into Lunala next. Now, Lunala, I think, is going to be in the usable tier. While Lunala has really low usage in Ubers right now, it's because of this Pokemon. I do think that Lunala does still have some niche as a nice Scarf user. Obviously, uh, for example, Shadow Shield is still really good. But until... Until Shadow Calyx gets banned, if Lunala at best will be usable. I think that might be over overstating it as well, to be fair. Though I do still think that Lunala, if it wasn't... Well, actually, I'm going to put Lunala in niche. Because there's really not a lot of reasons to use it over Shadow Calyx. The only reason is just the fact that it's a lot more usable of a Scarfer. At least on turn one, because it's just... Well, actually, no, I wouldn't even go that far. I'm going to put this in don't use. Um, I will say though, that once Shadow Calyx gets banned, this goes from don't use to very good. It's literally just, there's no reason to use it over Shadow Calyx, so in my opinion. Um, same for Dawn Wings, it's literally the same, but worse than Lunala. The difference being is that once Shadow Calyx gets banned, this is still going to be in don't use. Because there's no reason to use it. The only reason, I guess, would be Prism Armor. So maybe this goes for like niche at that point. But like, Lunala will be very good once Shadow Calyx gets banned. Though there's no reason to use either of these right now. Uh, Marshadow is the next. Very good Pokemon. Really, really good answer to stuff like Blissey, for example. So, on any sort of specially offensive threat, Marshadow is a phenomenal partner with it. Stuff like Xerneas, especially, this is a very, very good partner with. Uh, Scarf and Sash Marshadow are also actually very, very fun sets to run. They can definitely do a lot to certain builds. So, yeah, Marshadow is a very good Pokemon. Definitely a mod that I think is a real jack of all trades, at least as a physical threat. Um, it really only is a physical threat, however, it can do pretty much anything you want it to do, whether it's Scarf, Ban, Life Orb, uh, etc, etc, even Sash is really good. Naga? Don't use. Why would you use Naga? The only reason, I guess, is like it's an offensive T-Spiker, but I still can't think of any reasons why you- Actually, I'm gonna put it in niche, because, again, it's similar to- It's similar to stuff like, for example, um, Dialga, where it's at least a dragon that can still not get completely fisted by Xerneas at turn 1, which is definitely something to note. I think it's pretty notable. Also, it's an offensive T-Spiker and a regular offensive Spiker, which is cool. It's basically just taking Greninja's role from last gen and filling it this gen, which is honestly not bad. 
but I do think it's still definitely niche at best. Um, I can definitely make the case for don't use because it is still Naga and it is still Ubers, just not great. But I think that at least getting spikes does help it at least define its role a bit more as a niche Pokemon. Um, Melmetal, I'm gonna put Melmetal in niche as well. Um, I will say that there's objectively better steals than Melmetal, but Melmetal having such ridiculous physical defense is honestly not bad for it. I don't know why you would use it, but like, I can kind of see it, but actually I'm gonna put this in don't use. Again, I don't know why people are using Melmetal. Um, Rillaboom, I would put, Rillaboom is definitely an niche Pokemon. Uh, just having Priority Glide for Kyogre automatically makes this at least a remotely viable pick. However, this isn't a great mod by any means. Um, I guess it also kind of makes Kartana more viable, but Kartana not being able to max anymore kind of sucks, to be honest. Also, Rillaboom not being able to max anymore kind of sucks. So, yeah, this is at least a niche pick. I can definitely get why people would run it, but I personally wouldn't. Uh, but it does at least have a merit that is definitely notable enough. Now we're going to get into the end of the list. We have the last set of Pokemon, uh, Cinderace. Definitely a usable Pokemon. Uh, Libra or Cinderace is a really good physical threat. Really fast Mon too. Having Boots is also really cool because this thing can actually not really be Hazard Week. Uh, the Fire typing is really cool, especially with stuff like High Jump Kick and also Priority Sucker Punch. Honestly, gives this thing a lot of nice offensive power. Um, it's definitely not the best Pokemon by any means, but the fact that it's a really physical threat with also good momentum definitely does give it some nice usability. Also, the fact that Cinderace does have options like Court Change in its disposal, which while not the best, can definitely get around teams that are very, um, very hazard heavy. So, this definitely does have its nice usability in the tier. I think it's still definitely a not bad Pokemon, and Cinderace I think will always be a very useful Pokemon just because of its typing and Libra alone. Uh, Corviknight next, I think Corviknight is another usable Pokemon, similar to Pex, it's just the fact that the tier really isn't kind to it. Though I will say it's definitely just a better version, because the fact this is a nice mixed threat that also isn't going to be very passive, because Corviknight can at least go for stuff like Iron Defense, of course, and then spam Body Press. So this definitely does have its nice merit, however, Pex obviously has merit over it being a nice uh, phaser with Haze, which is really cool, and also having Regen. The Pressure Corviknight is still really good. I just don't think it's anything like these Pokemon. If you look at these Pokemon, you look at Corviknight. Corviknight just not on that level by any means. Uh, Grimstarl, uh, niche. The only reason this is niche is because it's dark type with screens. If it wasn't a dark type or if it didn't have screens, this would be don't use. Uh, Dragonfish, Dragonfish is definitely usable. Only reason I would say this isn't a very good Pokemon is just the fact that there's a lot more Pokemon that outpace it now. Stuff like Shadow Calyx, for example, just outpaces even Scarf. Uh, also the fact that you really need Band in Ubers, which means a lot of the tier actually does outpace it. Great threat on web teams, especially as a threat with Kyogre, this mod is a menace. Because if you somehow barely switch on it before, with Rain Up, yeah, good luck. This Pokemon is definitely very good. However, I do think its speed is what really hinders it. If it's even hit base 90, this would be a very good Pokemon. Honestly, if it hit 90, I would argue it might even have a spot as nearly mandatory, just because base 90 speed versus base 75 is a huge difference if you look at a lot of the Pokemon with now speed tie. So yeah, uh, Pult, Pult is niche. Only reason it's niche is because of the speed. Um, I couldn't tell you why. Actually, no. I, I don't know why people are using Pult. Truly, I could not tell you. It's similar notion to like Lunala and, Do and Dawnwings where there's an objectively better ghost and there's another objectively better ghost. And there's so many objectively stronger dragons that can even just run Scarf and still outpace. I don't know why people are using it. Uh, regular Zacian. Why? You have no reason to use it. Do you see this Pokemon right here? Why would you ever use this? No reason. Uh, Zamazenta Crown. I'm going to actually have to make a new... Oh, oops. I fucked up. Uh, we're going to have to add a new row. Um, this row is... Um, oh, you? Um, this is only for Zamazenta Crown. Um, this is not a great Pokemon by any means. I will fully stand by it. I know that Blunder obviously made his video as somewhat of a shit post, though I do definitely see a lot of the merit. I've been preaching this mod is very bad for the entirety. Um, I'm not going to put anything else, like obviously stuff like Zard and Galvantula, because those are already not actual Ubers. This is at least an actual Uber though, that really, really sucks. There will never be a format this is very good in. There will never be a format this is even usable in. This is just a bad Pokemon. It's literally like any sort of those d rank Pokemon last gen. Um, though I think it's so bad and at least needs its own tier. Because at the very least, stuff like Lando Eye can be used to kill stuff like Sama's Head to Crown. This cannot. This is just that bad.
Maybe if it had body press, it would actually probably be a usable Pokemon because it could at least come in, hit with a plus one body press, and do stuff. Uh, Zabuzenta, I'll at least give this don't use because while you shouldn't use it, at least you can throw a scar for a bandit on it and at least there's something going for it. Uh, Adonatus, Adonatus is very good. This is actually a pretty destructive Pokemon in the format and similar to stuff like Ho-Oh, this is definitely a Pokemon that can sit on a lot of different teams. The only difference is this is a really nice mixed defensive threat, which there aren't a lot of Pokemon that really are going to benefit against a lot of Pokemon in this format, both physically and specially. Though its typing and its speed honestly provide a lot for it. Also being a really fast and a really good T-Spiker in the tier definitely carves out a niche. The only other really good T-Spiker on here is like Pex and then Kana Naga. So this definitely does have a ton of merit in that regard. Also having natural high HP and recover with really good coverage too. Uh, Poison Fire Dragon hits a lot of the Pokemon in this format. Obviously it's pretty walled by T-Tar and Blissey. And in general, there's definitely Pokemon that can chew hits, like Ho obviously has enough spin F to really chew a hit. Though this thing definitely does have a lot going for it, I would say. Definitely a very good Pokemon. Urshifu, I would say Urshifu is niche. Um, it's basically just if Grimstarl was a potent physically offensive threat. Wicked Blow is also really cool on this Pokemon. Uh, this Pokemon, I think, will always be at least niche at worst. Though, I can definitely see the argument for usable, just because of the fact that it is also a fighting type, which is really cool against stuff like Blissey and Chansey, for example. Uh, it's also great. Actually, I'm going to put this in, in usable because of the fact that if we look at a lot of common stall builds, this also would basically just invalidate any sort of stall build on its own, to be honest. On top of also being able to still be really good against pretty much any sort of Shadow Calyrex check, stuff like Blissey, Titar, Ferrothorn. Well, not Ferrothorn. I don't know why I said Ferrothorn. I was thinking of mods that's just wrecked in the very good tier. But like Blissey, Titar, Chansey, for example, all would get completely destroyed by Urshifu. So I think this definitely does carve out a niche in that regard alone. Um, next up, I'm going to skip Reggie Lucky for now because I think it's a bit more complex. I tried a Calyrex. Niche. Trick Room is the only thing that saves this. If it couldn't set its own Trick Room, this would be Don't Use. Um, really cool typing at least. Really cool stab combination. Um, really cool coverage too. Just only, only really good in Trick Room. Though, if you get it in Trick Room, this is a threat. It's usually claiming at least two kills under Trick Room, but you really need to position this Pokemon right to be really strong. It is still definitely a good Pokemon nonetheless though. Uh, finally, Reggie Lucky. Now, Reggie Lucky, I think, is a really complicated Pokemon tier, actually. Uh, it has a lot going for it. For example, if you look at two of the Pokemon here, uh, Veltal and Calyrex, destroys them both. It basically invalidates them both. It can outpace Scarf variants on both. Uh, Veltal obviously does have Sucker Punch going for it, but this can still definitely get around most Pokemon, I would say, at least in that upper tier. Because even stuff like Calyrex, for example, uh, Zacian Crown, it can still definitely destroy them both of the spec set. Uh, the only thing that I think that really invalidates this Pokemon from being in the very good tier is the fact that Zygar Complete is so good and the fact that Groudon is very usable because of honestly stuff like this and Zekrom. I'm going to put this thing in usable, though I will say, looking at a lot of Pokemon in the tier, the fact that this is one of the few offensive threats that can even get around something like a Ditto because this can actually take a Scarf Thunder from Ditto, even a Scarf... Well, the only thing it can take is the Scarf Rising Voltage, but only if it's in terrain, which you're not going to really get terrain up anymore because no one's going to run like Reggie like Coco in the tier, because why? Uh, but really, the, that's the only thing that would outright kill it from a Ditto. Otherwise, this Pokemon will always beat Ditto on if you want, because this will always Oko Ditto, and Ditto cannot OK you back from full. So this is definitely a very threatening Pokemon, I would say. It's an offensive threat that can actually beat Ditto on if you want. Stuff, not a lot of offensive threats can really say that. Also, the fact that it checks a lot, if not just outright beats a lot of the upper tier Pokemon, but the fact that any ground type can basically come in and make this Pokemon insanely useless and get so much momentum gain on it really stops it from being in the very good tier. If it wasn't for that, this would easily be a very good Pokemon. I would argue this might even have a place in nearly mandatory if it had any ground coverage, like Energy Ball, let's say, just because of the blistering speed, the fact that you have Transistor, obviously, um, and the fact that at that point, I mean, the only ground type that would even switch in would be like. Zyger Crown, because you wouldn't have ice coverage. But Zyger Crown, uh, Zyger Complete switches on pretty much anything. It doesn't have ice coverage. So, with that said, that is my personal tier list. Um, this is what I personally think of the tier. Now, I'm not going to act like I have any sort of Uber's legend or anything, but this is from my experience on laddering my personal thoughts. Let me know what you guys think down below. As I said, I'll link the tier, create the tier maker down below so you guys can obviously make your own version of this list. And if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. Comment, subscribe if you're new. We're on our way to 200. We're at 178 at the time of recording this. And I'm hoping to hit 200 by the end of the month and then 250 by the end of the year. With that said, it's been your girl Liv. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out, guys.